we're driving two cars that aren't quite what they seem. You think you're looking at a Porsche 356B or a mid-90s 911. But what are these cars and why should we care? Imagination is what creates a car like a Porsche. Reimagination is what creates cars like the Singer 911 and the Emery Outlaw. The question is, is it necessary to reimagine what the Porsche designers have done already? And if you do, does it make it better? The Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer are cars that are based on the Porsche 964. Now, for those people who are not in the Porsche world, it's a sort of a strange thing that Porsche has been making the 911 since 1964, but each of the individual 911s, and of course 911 started as a variant of the 901, which is the project number for the car, and over the years, once it became 911, has just stuck as the model name, although the individual project names and the individual cars have changed their internal designation. So in order to be right inside Porsche world, you have to know all of the individual uh, model types. So this is a type 964, which is not to be confused with 962 race car in any event. Um, these are considered by many to be the absolute epitome of the air-cooled 911, which for many, of course, is considered to be the epitome of what Porsche stands for. And these cars in their day were absolutely amazing cars because they combined for the first time a reliability and performance. Performance that could be handled by, if not the average driver, certainly you didn't have to be an expert driver to be able to exploit much of the performance of a Porsche 911 and the 964 guys. And that made a big difference. The generation before this was the generation that had introduced to the world the fearsome 930 Turbo. And that was a car with amazing performance, but also quite frightening on the road. And it's interesting to think that this car, as reimagined by Singer, has much more performance than that one, but in a thoroughly usable format. Now, of course, what I happen to like about what Singer does with these cars is the fact that I'm as much about the aesthetics as about the performance, quite frankly. And these cars are bespoke luxury items. Each one is, in effect, built for the customer who orders the car and over 4,000 hours of work goes into transforming a used 964 into a Singer. And all the details can be specced by the customer. The person who ordered this particular car ordered it in this specific color combination of Downton Blue with Singer Racing Orange, which is a, a, a neat nod to the great golf racing colors of uh, blue and orange, and yet in a subtle tweak. Again, much like the entire point of a Singer. Everything is what you recognize, but subtly different. The Singer 911 is the brainchild of Rob Dickinson, a British rock musician who was also a designer at Lotus. And it's quite interesting that this car really does feel, in many ways, uh, like the car that I think Lotus could have built if they actually had the money and paid the attention. Dickinson is absolutely fanatical about things like fit and finish. And even though the Porsche 911 in this period was built to a very high standard, as Porsches have always been from the first 356, here they go to an even greater length to make sure that the panel fit is exactly right, the gaps, the, the, the flushness from panel to panel. And it shows. Also, again, I mentioned that I love details. And the details, I'm, I'm a fool for quilted leather. I mean, just show me some quilted leather and I just melt, I swoon. This quilted leather everywhere, in the engine compartment, underneath the hood, the basket weave on the dashboard is just absolutely amazing, and the doors. And every part of the car 
just shows attention to detail and frankly money spent and these cars are not inexpensive at all so you may think well what do you get for the money that you spend on a singer and of course it's performance although quite interestingly at this period of time and I spent some time speaking to uh, Dickinson a number of years ago about uh, these cars when I was doing an appraisal of one for a client and one thing that I really admired about the cars then and this example is an example of one of those it's a car with a 4 liter engine 390 horsepower which delivers very 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 good performance I think frankly all the horses you could actually use on a road and it was about balance again the reimagination that Singer brings to this 911 is one that's not very far from the vision of the Porsche engineers themselves. And I like that idea of balance, especially in a time when so many people are after raw power. And raw power is nice in its place, but to me it's about usable power. And that's what a singer delivers, usable power, in a way that's comfortable and somewhat exciting uh, these uh, seats for instance they're a singer trademark and they're very snug I mean fortunately uh, I exercise at the gym and try to get enough uh, good diet so that I can actually fit in a seat like this and it's very comfortable for, for what it is it's not a car that I want to drive across the country in but you could do long distances in this car I've got uh, friends who've driven these cars on uh, long weekend rallies and enjoyed the experience very much but I think it's more about a sort of a, a brief fun ride um, just exploring just a little bit of the performance capability in an envelope that feels familiar it's got a great truck gearbox steering wheel is just the right diameter just the right size it makes enough noise so that you know that the engine is there and you've got a high performance engine but it's not so much that you think, well, after two hours, I'd be deaf and my kidneys would be vibrating. So the question remains, is the singer reimagined something that's really necessary? Well, I would say for this period of Porsche, when the performance was pretty accessible and comfortable in the standard models, perhaps not really, but it's good to know that it's here. And the question is, is it worth the money? <laughs> well, that's a question that only someone with the means and the desire could answer. Now we're stepping a few decades back in Porsche history to something rather more reimagined than the Singer. This is an Emery Porsche 356 Outlaw. And uh, it's funny that uh, modified 356s have all taken the, the, the moniker Outlaw, but this Outlaw, or this type of Outlaw, is the first of its kind. Rod Emery worked in his father's business alongside his father building high performance 356s for a very distinctive clientele that loved the vintage Porsches but wanted just a little more in terms of performance and while cars like this have an equivalent in uh, American cars known as resto mods the approach that Emery takes towards building and designing these cars is rather different. The particular car that I'm driving right now was born as a 356B with a 60 horsepower engine and today has a modified 911 engine putting out over 200 horsepower. As you can imagine, just throwing a big engine into a 356 would not be the best idea so Emery also builds in a host of suspension modifications and upgrades tires wheels steering 
to make this car perform throughout in a way that's worthy of the Porsche name. And for that reason, the Emery Outlaws have built a great reputation in the motoring world. I have to freely admit that although Rod Emery is a terrific guy and the cars that he and his father have turned out are wonderful cars, for a very long time I never understood why people wanted to build Outlaw 356s. I always enjoyed the driving experience of a standard 356, especially a 1600 Super, until I drove the ultimate 356 variant, the Carrera 2. The four cam, high performance, race the ride version of the 356. And then I understood why people built Outlaws. They wanted to have in their 356 the same kind of performance you could find in a Carrera 2. Really evenly distributed throughout the power range and just with all of the power and torque that you could possibly want. Anyone who has driven a Carrera 2 finds it hard to go back to a standard 356, especially a 60 horsepower one, and find the same kind of satisfaction. It's very interesting that, uh, of course, we all know about Ralph Nader and the Corvair, and the challenges of driving a powerful rear engine car quickly and safely. But what the, the capability that the Porsche engineers put into the, the 356 chassis was such that it could handle a great deal more power than most of the road going cars had. And that's really been exploited to its ultimate uh, aspect here in these Emery Outlaws. I also think they do it with a great deal of respect for the Porsche engineers because they don't simply throw away all that Porsche made. They look at it and figure out where they can do it more efficiently using modern technology but in a way that's respectful to the overall driving experience of a 356. It's a really sophisticated tuner mentality that Emery brings to these cars because they're designed from the ground up. It's not just about a powerful tweaked 911 motor in a 356B. It's about what suspension do we need? What is, this, what is the gearing of the steering? What tires? What wheels? To make it feel balanced and secure, this is not the experience of a pure 356B, but it is a purely Porsche experience. Hi, it's Donald, back with the answer for this week's Audrain Fun Fast Fact Quiz question. Which company matched Spiker's achievement of competition victory a hundred years apart? The answer is Benz. In 1914, the Benz company scored a 1-2-3 finish in that year's French Grand Prix. In 2014, Mercedes-Benz Grand Prix Racing scored a 1-2 finish at the Monaco Grand Prix. Impressive results. Thanks for playing our quiz and for watching our videos. If you like these videos, let your friends know. Subscribe, comment, share.